you are going to think differently about snails after you see this footage. Hold on, before I really get into this, I should admit that this is kind of disturbing footage if you like snails, especially if you like snails. It's also some of the first wildlife footage I ever shot. Wow, right? Wow. What we're looking at is a snail that's a carnivore that eats other snails by extending itself into their shell and eating them alive. Pretty intense for a snail. I shot this footage 15 years ago and when I set it up, I didn't know what I was getting myself into. Essentially, this is a carnivorous snail that will latch on to another snail. It follows its slime trail, right? And then it will extend itself inside out into that other snail. Now the story I'm gonna tell you today isn't fully sad. I'm gonna to get to all the good stuff at the end. Let me start with some background. I started shooting all of this to tell the story of the Oahu tree snails, this diverse group of tree snails that live up on the tops of the mountains there in Hawaii. If you wanna go up and find them, you gotta walk, go up into the Koalau range. And for four years while I was in grad school, I was actually leading tours up to the top of these mountains. I was learning all about the diversity and these were some of the greatest examples of speciation. So I kind of fell in love with them and I had a few friends who were studying them and trying to rehab them. So I went in to their labs and I started filming it so I could tell my students. <laughs> so here's the basic story of the Oahu tree snails. Thousands and thousands of years ago, a snail made it to the Hawaiian Islands. It then populated, spread all across the islands, and as the islands then started to erode and giant valleys formed between the ridges, the different snail species became separated, meaning that the different populations on the different mountains couldn't interbreed. And then they became different enough because of that geographic isolation that we called them new species. Now this type of speciation we call allopatric speciation. So then when we humans came to the Hawaiian Islands, starting with the Hawaiians, they discovered an island full of different species of snails, 750 different land snails, 200 different types of tree snails. The forests were full of these. In fact, they said the forest sang with the sounds of snails. Now that's as the legend goes, pretty sure the snails weren't singing. But the point is there were probably a lot of these snails. In fact, even Darwin knew about these Oahu tree snails as a shining example of speciation on islands. They were beautiful. They really were. They were collected by the hundreds of thousands. These are some of the ones collectors took. Unfortunately, there are very few Oahu tree snails left. But it really got bad when invasive species came to the island. So you've got rats and chameleons, which like to eat snails. And then you have these introduced snails, in particular, the rosy wolf snail, right here that I was shooting that was introduced to try to combat this giant African snail. The problem is the rosy wolf snail instantly took a liking to the Oahu tree snails and started to devour them. So this is a snippet of a short interview I took in 2003. There were 41 described species of Acatonella and now there's probably seven or eight left. And probably Acatonella apex vulva. I think we have 10 individuals now and we think they're extinct in the wild. In 2010, I came back to film a bigger piece on the Oahu tree snails. Um, these are our environmental chambers. We have five of them. And inside of these chambers, we try to replicate the conditions of the remaining habitat where the snails live in the mountains. We have this PVC framework with a drain tray, your basic garden sprinkler uh, that we use to replicate rainfall. Um, three times a day for one minute, uh, it will rain on the snails, sort of what happens in the mountaintops, if you're familiar with our or a graphic rainfall here on Oahu. <laughs> what we have here, this is our what we call our fungus incubator, and this is where we grow the food that we feed to the snails, that we supplement their diet with, because they're grazing the leaves that we put in the containers with them, but just in case, we like to give them a little something extra. We isolated this fungus off the leaf of a native tree many years ago, and so we've just continued to grow it for them. And look, here we have some snails feeding. Now you have to remember these snails grow extremely slow. It's about seven years before they become reproductively mature and can have little baby snails. And that is almost unheard of in snails. The point is the lab's doing everything they can to rehab this dwindling population of snails. And here's the really not good news. Right after the turn of the year, Acatonella apex fulva, the rarest one that I had been documenting since 2003, finally died. Lonely George, they called him. And stories like this happen all the time in Hawaii. It's the extinction capital of the world. And I'm an ecologist who studied originally in Hawaii. 
And these are the stories that I grew up learning. Almost half of my friends were studying animals on the brink of collapse. And what most of these organisms need is they need good natural habitat, free from invasive species. So they need the land and they need the native species. So it made me think, what is it that we can do to try to help animals like the Oahu tree snail? Now, not everybody lives in Hawaii, so it's hard to try to help animals somewhere you don't live. But there are native habitats all over the world. So this is what I would encourage you to do. Think about what you can do in your own town first. And this starts with knowing what's in your backyard. Go out, try to make sure you can identify all the trees in your backyard. And then think about what you can do for the native habitats there. For me, the back half of my property, that's for native species. Maybe for you, you take some flowers that are native, you plant them for the pollinators in your local area. Or maybe if you don't own land, you can go out and volunteer on some wild places to try to pull invasive species or plant native ones. It's not all doom and gloom. It can feel that way a lot of times, but we have to think positively and think about the things that we can do every day. Also, just a quick heads up, that footage I showed at the beginning, that wasn't an Oahu tree snail being devoured. I would not do that. That would be terrible. So that's good news. Also, we have to say a big thanks to everybody in Hawaii who's doing this important conservation work. And I also wanted to thank our patrons who are contributing a dollar or two every video just to help me tell these important conservation stories. And I wanted to note that this is a collaborative effort between myself and the watercolor naturalist. So go check out her videos here. So you can continue learning about this story in kind of a unique way with her watercolor art. All right, thanks everybody. We'll see you in a future video.